Hey, welcome back YouTube. My name is Mike Swartz. Today, we're gonna to be talking about volume profile. What is volume profile? How do we set it up? Volume profile strategies. All that is gonna be encompassed in this volume profile series. Now, this is gonna be video one of the volume profile series. And what has caused me to want to put this video together is during my live streams or even in the, in the comment section of a lot of videos that I release, I get a lot of questions like, what is POC? What is value high? What is value low? What type of volume profile strategies do you trade? Are there any other strategies? What does this day type mean? All of those things are gonna be answered within this video series. But first, we gotta start with the very, very basics, all right? What is, a vo what is volume profile? What is a POC? All right, and I do wanna share with you guys that I use multiple volume profile charts. The first one is volume profiles on a 30 minute chart. Then I also have the, the volume profile where I split up the night session or the overnight session along with the New York session. Then I have the composite profile combined with the weekly profiles. And I'm gonna share with you guys how to set all that up in today's video. Now, let's talk about what is volume profile? Well, just think about this. This is nothing more than similar to a bell curve, right? It's a histogram showing at each individual price point volume was transacted. So the thicker or the, the more that the volume profile protrudes outward, that means there was more volume traded at that specific price point. Now you may hear me throw around a term a lot called POC. POC stands for point of control, all right? And what that means is that is the point in which the most amount of contracts were traded at that specific, on that specific profile. This can be on a day, this can be on a week, this could be on a monthly, whatever the case may be. Now, when you guys look at my charts, you'll see a yellow line going through the profile. This is showing me that was this session's POC level. You've also probably heard me use the term naked POC, right? So on this day right here, February 10th, the price point that had the most amount of volume traded was 45.6350, which is this yellow line right here. Now this ends up being a naked POC. Some people call it a virgin POC. Some people call it an untested POC. Whatever terminology you use, it's all gonna be the same. As long as you grasp the concept, it doesn't matter you know, what you really call it. And the reason this is gonna be a naked POC is because once the next session starts, and again, this could be a 30 minute session, a daily session, a weekly session, whatever. As soon as the next session starts, this is gonna be a naked POC until price comes back and test this. All right, now, thankfully, the, the volume profile tools that NinjaTrader provides comes where, with, a, with a feature where it'll automatically draw out our naked POCs. So no longer are the days where I have to sit there and say, okay, we have a, a POC up here, it hasn't been tested, and you know, go ahead and I'll take it off my chart once I see price come up there and test it. It's much more efficient just letting the software draw it out for you and taking it off once the price has been tested. Here's a clear example on this day right here, February 8th, we had a naked POC at 45.12. Now this is not a naked POC until the session closed, but we know for a fact on February 8th, 45.12 was a price, was, was a point within the day that had the most amount of contracts traded. So this was the, the, the price point that had the most volume on that whole particular day. We traded a lot lower, we traded a little bit higher, but right here is where a majority of you know, buy and sell transactions were transacted at, right? The highest volume point. Now, this was a naked POC. The following day did not come down and test it. It wasn't until the day after that, the market came down and tested it. And now the naked POC no longer plots on my chart. Now let's talk about value area high and value area low. Now this is very simple. If we look on my profile where it's bright blue, this is considered value on the edges of that the edge below that would be value area low. How do we know this is the edge? It goes from bright blue to like a dimmer color blue. Up here at the high, value area high is gonna be right there on the edge where the profile goes from bright blue to like a dim blue. Now, what makes this profile dim blue or, or bright blue? And in my case, I'm using 68% of the total volume that day 
was transacted in between those levels. And I wanna show you guys something. If I come over here to the indicator tab, I wanna go ahead and change some values so you can actually see you know, how those values play out. If I go ahead and I, I use, instead of using 68, some people use 70, 68 to me is the number that I use, but let's say I put it to 80, all right? I want you to visualize where, excuse me, value area low is. I'm gonna go ahead and hit reply. Now look how much lower value area low jumped down. Now, if you had a hard time, you know, seeing that as I was updating that, I went ahead and now I've dropped a horizontal line across where value area low is. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna change value area in terms of percent back to 68, all right? Now we can see that it's gonna migrate upwards because again, we're trying to figure out where 68% of the most volume was traded because where the most volume is traded, that's where you know perceived value is. Both buyers and sellers see that there is value in that area. That's why that area is significant, and it's not just some random oscillator or something you know scrolling across our screens. Now, now that we know what POC stands for, point of control, value area high, you may also see it in a text as VAH. Value area low, you may also see it in a text as VAL. Again, very simple terminologies, and that terminology is universal across all the profiles that I will be using, and even market profile and volume profile, it's gonna be the same terminology. So for weekly profiles, it's gonna look all the same. Now, let's go about setting up our first chart and placing a volume profile onto that chart. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna start with a 30 minute time period chart and we're gonna go over to indicators. Now, depending on your platform, it may be in a different location, but on NinjaTrader, I can come right down here to where it says order flow volume profile. I can just double click on that, which I already have it, so I'm gonna remove that one. But you can double click it and it'll add it right over here. Now, once we do that, it's gonna bring up a dialog box over here, a properties box where we can change a lot of different settings. And I wanna explain you know, the, some of the settings that I do use and I do change. All right, display mode. You can just leave this at standard profile type, volume. For the 30 minute profile, we're gonna leave this at sessions. All right, this is very important. Profile on the 30 minute chart is gonna be left to sessions. Now, trading hours, I'm gonna use the same data series that is on the chart, all right? So this is gonna be important as well. Resolution, one minute. And again, I use my value area at 68. We go ahead, we do not want auto scale clicked on because that will, if there's a profile over here and it's going way lower, it's gonna kind of scrunch up the charts a little bit and it just doesn't look as uniformity for me. Now the profile, you can either put it on the left-hand side of price, meaning the left-hand side, as soon as the session opens, it starts building the profile over here, or you can have it on the right axis. Now, what I would encourage you to do is leave it on the left side for the time being. Maybe you'll wanna change it later on, but as we progress to this video, you'll see why I have it on that side here in a bit. Now, if I was to move it onto the right, here's what it looks like. I can just simply click that. Now you can see that same profile that was over here is just now over here. All right, so again, I'm gonna put it over to the left. Now, part of the reason when, when that profile is over here on the right, you can see as every time we plot a new price bar, it's always gonna be on the right hand side of the screen, which is gonna to start to get distorted away from the profile. We wanna be able to see price as we're trading the market. So again, that's very, very important to me. Now, when we come over here to profile width, I found 25 is a good number for my screen size and resolution. Yours may be different. Let's say I was to change this to 80, then I hit click apply. You'll see how crazy these profiles look, right? I don't want this all exaggerated, covering up you know, all of my price candles. So what I do is I just minimize that to get it down to 25, sometimes 15, sometimes 20, depends on the screen resolution that you're using. That way I can see the shapes of the profile. I can see value area high, value area low. I can see where the distribution levels are, which means distribution is the peaks within the profile in the minus development areas, which are gonna be the valleys. Now, those two terminologies, you're gonna to wanna to know and pay attention to because in the next video, we are gonna be talking about those levels and why they are so important. All right, now, I don't wanna drag this video out for like an hour long, so that's why we are gonna split up the video in the series, but do me a favor real quick, or two favors. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, hit the subscribe button, give the video a big thumbs up, but more importantly, if you have any questions as I go through this video in terms of volume profile, 
please leave a comment down below because as you guys are watching this video, if you're watching it within the first week that I'm recording it, then I haven't had a shot. I haven't had a chance to record the second video. And I want to make sure that, you know, the questions that were asked within this video, I can answer in videos either two or three, depending on how long this video series has to go on. All right. Now the next session, we, the next um, thing we want to use on our chart, we want to have set opacity to 40 show POC, all right? POC. If I go ahead and apply that, where I uncheck it, there's no longer a yellow line, all right? To me, that's important. I wanna be able to see where the POC is for the day because sometimes the histogram is kind of close in a couple different areas. And I, I wanna just to, you know let the software do the work for me and draw it out for me. Show value areas, all right? If I go ahead and I unclick show value areas, you can see the profile is all one color. So again, I do wanna see the value areas of the profile. Value high and value low are very important for me as was part of the target targets that we were targeting today for the Dow and even the S&P. All right, value area opacity. I leave this at 80. Let's say I was gonna put it to 100, then that would overshadow the price candles. You can see you can't see through the candles whatsoever. So I leave this at 80 and it, it's, you know, I can at least see the price candles um, behind it. But as, you know, more market data gets, you know, built out as the day progresses, then you're gonna be able to see the candles anyways because we have this on the left side of the chart. Now, if you want to change your profile, for this one, I had the profile color set to cauliflower, cauliflower blue. You can change this to whatever color you want. All these other ones, I'm not really using these other features as of right now. Now, times, we can just leave that. We don't have to worry about there. But there is, within these lines, there's only one setting that we really need to turn on. Now, maybe you want to turn on some other settings, but if we want to keep it as simple as possible, then the most important setting in this whole area is gonna be extend naked POCs. So when we click on this, I keep all of my POCs yellow in color. I have it as a dashed line with one, but visibility, all right? If I was to uncheck this box, then we would no longer see the yellow lines coming across, all right? We do wanna see the yellow lines for the naked POCs coming across because they are very significant. And you guys will see that at a later part within this series. Now, the label tab, if I unclick that, you can see we have a yellow line, but what price point was this yellow line? We could grab a crosshair and kind of, you know, get a gauge for roughly where that level is actually at. But if we have the labels turned on, you'll see that it actually plots the exact price point in which the naked POC is being plotted. Right now, as far as down a little bit lower, there is one, two more things that we want to have on. Show volume labels, go ahead and click that. Show, vo uh, show profile summary. Again, both of these are important to me and we can go ahead and click OK. Um, now, here's gonna, the, the volume summary is gonna show us right here how much volume so far for the day. The other one that we had clicked at the bottom is showing us what the range is for the day. So on this day, I know there is a range of 107.75 points. If you're a trader that you know looks at daily ATRs, you know what the average range is in the instrument that you're trading, this can be a very useful tool to see where we are in terms of the range for the day. Because you know if we have a day where the market rips up real big and then rips down, the if we look at the quote or the watch list, it may show that maybe the S&P is down 20 points, but really it's had a range of 40 or 60 points. If the average range is roughly 60 points, then you know the odds are against us that the market is gonna continue further. Not to say that it doesn't happen because obviously it does. That's how ranges expand and contract. All right, now, now that we know ahead how to set up this profile on the 30 minute chart, let's go over and look at another profile type that's gonna be a lot more complex to set up. Now, if you've had a chance to watch the videos that I released before 9.30, then you've got a chance to look at these profiles right over here. And what is going on on this screen is on the left-hand side, the green profile, this is actually the overnight trading session. The blue profile is gonna be the New York session. Now, this is important. And again, we're gonna talk about this in, later on within this series, but you know you do wanna pay attention to these levels because, or this profile because they do give very, very valuable levels for us to trade the New York trading session. Now, I do wanna share with you guys, let's go ahead and go to indicators. Now, what we have to do is we have to add, go back to the volume profile indicator once again on our chart, which is gonna be under order flow volume profile. And we just wanna simply double click it twice. That way it puts it down in our, in our box two different times. Now, 
The first profile is gonna be my green profile, which is gonna be the overnight session. Now, all the settings down here at the bottom are the same except for, right? If we come down here to the lines where it says extend naked POCs, we do not wanna make that visible. Otherwise, if we make all the lines visible, it's just gonna to be too overbearing on this chart. And it's just, it's a, it's a lot of a lot of noise that we're not gonna need. So we can go ahead and make sure that that's not clicked. But up here, this is where it's gonna get very important, all right? If you don't set this up correctly, it's not going to work. Under properties, profile type, volume, display mode, standard, profile period, session, sessions one, all right? But then trading hours, hmm, mine says overnight. If you remember there before, we actually had where it said, um, let's see, it said <clears throat> use data series settings. So how did I get this overnight setting? Well, for that, we need to come over to the control panel because this is gonna take a little bit of work. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come right over here to tools. Then we're gonna come over here to um, trading hours right here. And if we look, we're gonna come right down here because this is alphabetized. And I'm gonna come down to where it says overnight. And I probably just passed it right here, overnight. And what I did is I named this. So I went ahead and I put add and I created a new one. Now here's where it's important. You wanna, you wanna make sure you take note of these values because they are very important. Sunday, Sunday night, I start the profile at 6 p.m. I end the profile Monday at 9.30 a.m. Now you can also end this at 9 a.m., but 9 to 9.30 a.m. is where you're gonna wanna end this profile. You need to make sure you have the end of the, end of the day check mark in this box right over here and you're going to build out another day now what i'm going to do is i'm going to run you through a quick example i'm only going to build out one day <clears throat> that way i don't take up a whole bunch of you know wasted time in this video doing simple tasks all right so i'm just going to put test on here and i'm going to start with a new day all right new day is going to be sunday well sunday we already said we're going to open at 6 p.m all right and oops p.m and we're gonna end the session again, the following day, and I'm just gonna put 9 a.m., all right? 9, 9 a.m., click OK, and we wanna make sure we click this box. All right, now, for the next day, we're gonna to wanna to come over here and we wanna click Add. The next day, we're gonna be starting it on Monday. All right, when? Monday at 6 p.m. All right, so again, change this, and we're gonna click p.m., and then we're gonna end it, all right, on Tuesday, the following day, and this is gonna end at 9 a.m., all right? Click OK, and you wanna do that, and make sure we click this box here. You wanna do that until you have all the start dates Sunday through Thursday, all the end dates Monday through Friday. <clears throat> so again, once you have that all built, then you wanna simply click OK, make sure you remember the name that you named this test as, and now, once you have that set up, this is gonna make it to where we can actually have this profile only plot the overnight session. So now we're gonna come back over to indicators. We're gonna click on this volume profile and under sessions, or I'm sorry, under trading hours, that's where we're gonna pick our, what we just made in the, in the dropdown. Now I have one named test, but I didn't save it. So I just need to click on the overnight session and it'll be set up perfectly. Now, resolution one minute, Ticks per level one, value area, I use 68%. You know, you can use 70, whatever you wanna use, but the standard default is gonna be 68. And everything else on the bottom can be left the same. Again, we do not want to extend the naked POC levels. All right, now we're gonna move on to the next profile. And actually, there is one more thing we need to change. I changed the, co the color of the profile to green. You can change this to whatever color you, you would like, but I would encourage you to separate the two different colors so when you look at your chart, you know one color is for the overnight session, you know the other color is for the New York session. That way you can, a quick glance so you don't get you know sidetracked and you, know, you, accidentally, you accidentally make a mistake. Now we're gonna come over to the second profile. For the color of this, I have it as cauliflower blue and everything is gonna be set up the same except for trading hours. I'm gonna use the CME, and for the trading hours, I just come right over here, and I click CME US Index Futures RTH, all right? Very important, RTH. Now, when we look at here, we want this 
um, profile period, set the sessions. Again, very important. And the next the next slide or the next chart that we set up, you're gonna you're gonna see this value is gonna actually be different. It's not gonna be set on set sessions. All right. Everything else is gonna be left the same. Now, profile widths, you may want to adjust, all right? And again, you gotta play with this for your screen resolution, but the profile width, if I was to make this, you know, something crazy, you know, if I make this small, we don't want it too small because we didn't wanna be able to see it. That's too small, all right? And again, it's gonna all depend on your screen resolution and how you like to see. I want mine a little bit bigger than this, so we'll go back to 60. Because again, it's not going across the whole chart. So 60 on this one seems to fit relatively well. And again, you can adjust the profile for the overnight session as well. Profile, the overnight session, I only have it set to 25 because the overnight session is a lot more hours. So if I was, if I were to set this one at 60, all right, it just, it you can see it just protrudes out way too much for me, all right? And again, this is just, you know, the way it looks. Now, nothing more, you can leave it however you want it, but to me, I like it better set at 25. All right, so that sets up the profiles where we're gonna actually look for levels before the US open, before the US stock market opens. And this is gonna kinda you know, give us an if then thought process for a lot of the trades that we're gonna place during the New York session. When I say we, just know that I'm referring to myself. All right, now we're gonna come over to the third type of profile chart that we set up. This one is also gonna have two profiles. One is gonna be a composite profile. Now, you may say, Mike, what is a composite profile? A composite profile just means more than one day, essentially. The profile on the right is gonna go back roughly one year in time. All the little profiles on my chart are gonna be weekly profiles. So again, this is gonna be set up a little bit differently. So let's go ahead, we're gonna go back to indicators. And you would wanna you know, come right back down to your drop down window, go back to, Order flow volume profile, double click on your chart. You can see I already have it double click. I already have two of them added over here. The first one is gonna be the composite profile. I know that because my color is green. The composite profile, we wanna to set to a line on the right hand side of the screen. That's how I have mine set up. If you choose to flip flop them, then you know you can do as you would like, but you know, at least you know what the settings are. Now this one's gonna be set up drastically different. All right. I am not going to extend any of the lines over here. All right, actually I lie, I extend the naked POC because it's only one line, but that is the only line. I do not extend any of the other lines. And when we come up here, this is where it gets a lot different. Profile type is gonna be set to volume. Display mode, standard. Profile period, this needs to be set to composite. If you remember the other ones, they were set to sessions. This one needs to be set to composite. Composed by, days back. How many days back? 365 days looking back. Now you can also use, I've toggled between 300 and 365, and it will give a slight, you know, difference to the profile, but you know, either or, both will work, right? 365 is my preferred, but you know, whatever you choose is, you know, will be fine. Resolution, one minute, ticks per level, one. Value area, 68. We want to make sure that visibility is checked, otherwise you won't be able to see it. We do not want auto scale to be clicked on, all right? If I click auto scale on, you'll see why here in just a moment. I'm going to click auto scale, and I want you just to visualize this chart real quick, all right? Look right down here at the bottom, and then watch when I hit auto scale, it, it moves the chart way up, all right? So essentially, it scrunches up all the data because it's trying to put this whole composite profile within the chart, and that's not what how I want to see it, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. And now you can see, we can see price a lot, a lot better. And again, that's what we're aiming for. Profile width on this one is only going to be 15. And we can even drop this down to 10 if we would like, at least for my screen resolution. We do want to show the POC. We do want to show the value areas as well. Colors, you can change the colors for what you want. But for a majority of you guys, all you're going to use is the color, color profile. You can change it. Mine is set to green. You can change it to blue, yellow, red, whatever color that your heart desires would be perfectly fine. And down here at the bottom, I do have where it shows show volume label, show volume profile summary. I have both of those checked and you can make those colors however you would like them. All right, so that sets up the composite profile. Let's talk about the weekly profile. This one's gonna be a little bit different, all right? And this chart, just so you guys know, is set to a 240 minute time period chart. All right, 240 minute time period chart. All right, so we're gonna come up to the top. Again, this one's a little bit different than the previous profiles, volume type. Is, or profile type is gonna be volume. Display mode, standard. 
profile period. We want this one set to weeks, all right? Remember, the normal ones we were setting up were sessions. The last one for the composite over here was set to composite. This one we're gonna set to weeks. Now, next you're gonna see where it says weeks, it brings up this weeks tab right below here. We want this to one because we want each profile to equal one week. Resolution is gonna be one minute. Ticks per level, one. Value area percent is gonna be 68. Again, I use 68, some traders use 70. 68, I prefer, that's what works better for me and I've been using that for many, many years. Auto scale, we do not want turned on. Visibility, we need this turned on, yes. Profile alignment, we want this one set to left. And on this profile, on my screen resolution, I found the profile width 30, you know, suits my needs just fine. And the profile opacity is 40. Now, down here at the bottom, we do want POC, show value area, we want both of those boxes checked. Value area opacity, I have mine set to 80. And if we come down to profile color, is color flower blue, we talked about that. We do want to extend the naked POCs on this chart. All right, I have this set to dash, visible, one, and we want the label, okay? Because if I uncheck the label, again, the numbers are gonna go away. I wanna know exactly the numbers that we're actually looking to target here in the future, right? So that's gonna be very, very important for me. Now, I don't wanna drag this video out for an eternity. I wanna we wanna break this series up into little chunks. So that is gonna conclude this section, video one of the volume profile series. Again, do me a favor. If you have guys have any questions, anything that you felt that I missed with the basics before we start getting into strategies and things like that, please make sure you leave it in the comment section down below. That way I can make sure I address it in the next video or even if we end up having to do a three video series in, in the third or even fourth video. Like always, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Till next time, good luck and good trading.